Okay, you are looking live at a Boeing 747 with the Space Shuttle Enterprise on its back. It's making its way to New York City. It will land in just about an hour at JFK. But, of course, before it lands there, it will, of course, uh, make its way around the city, pass some landmarks in New York City like Central Park and uh, the Statue of Liberty. And, and what a beautiful sight this is. Just a couple of minutes ago, it took off from Dulles Airport in Virginia. It was a magnificent takeoff. Reynolds Wolf is here. He's our meteorologist. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about the challenges of flying over the Hudson River in New York. It's really windy there. It certainly is going to be on a day like today. If you were flying just as a, a commercial airline, you're flying over, you're going to feel a little bit of a bump here and there, no question about it. But uh, it's going to be enough that these guys will have a safe landing, obviously, at JFK. Amazing to see this immense object. Of course, you've got two separate uh, entities, but they're joined as one. Views at the top. And uh, you know what's amazing, too, is when you think about the, the big tractor, the thing that's pulling at the 747, maximum airspeed about 570 miles per hour, but with the shuttle on top of it, it can only do about half of that. You can't go any faster than that. So this is really a slow crawl. That being said, if you were standing right next to it and you had this thing come by, it would be roaring by at incredible speed, obviously, but from our vantage point, it does appear to be going very slow. But it's just amazing. If Orville and Wilbur Wright were alive today oh and they were able to see something, this this huge, immense object uh, going through uh, parts of, uh, of the Northeast, they'd be just blown away, no question about it. But we'll be going through some past some very amazing landmarks in parts of the Northeast. Uh, Statue of Liberty, uh, up the Hudson River. You see, of course, some of the, the places can going to be going by. JFK Airport is its destination for today. But the eventual spot, the eventual home, of course, will be at the intrepid Sea and Air, Sea, Air and Space Museum. And, and what a sight to behold. You, you've seen plenty of these launch from Cape Canaveral, haven't you? From uh, Florida? Yes, I have. It's kind of weird. Isn't it strange to see one of these piggy piggyback on a 747? It's still kind of odd. I mean, it, it's a spectacular sight, but it's sad to me because it's part of our history that's I'm being put to bed. Absolutely. And we don't really know you know, what, well, Eileen told us a, a few things that NASA's coming up with, but those are far, far into the future. I mean, the pri private industry will take over space travel for the United States, and that's just kind of weird, at least for me to think about, I'm because, you. you know, you think about that JFK speech and, and you know, all, all the presidents that really push space travel, and, and that is no more. So it's a spectacular sight and a sad sight. We're going to head out to New York City to check in with Jason Carroll. He is at JFK, where people are gathered to watch this thing land. So set the scene for us, Jason. Well, Carol, we're excited here in New York. Um, this is a, a, a new site for many New Yorkers. I know <laughs> you were talking about uh, seeing many shuttle uh, takeoffs, uh, landings, whatever it may be in Florida. But for, but for folks here in the Northeast, this is a completely new site. So an exciting day for people here in New York. Uh, lots of people now starting to file in here at JFK. Hundreds invited for the ceremony to take place uh, once Enterprise makes its historic landing here. Uh, it will be landing on the longest runway here at JFK, some 14,500 feet long. There were some early concerns about the wind. Uh, we've been told we've been experiencing wind gusts here at about 30 miles per hour, but NASA says it's a go. You've seen the Enterprise take off from Dulles, and so it's on its way. And so we're all here anxious awaiting. And I have to tell you, uh, there are a lot of folks here in New York that didn't expect New York City to be chosen as one of the final spots. You look at the other places, Atlanta, the Atlanta is going to the Kennedy Space uh, Center in Florida, the Endeavor heading to the California Science uh, Center in Los Angeles. You've got Discovery going to the Smithsonian in Virginia, and of course the Enterprise here. I know a lot of folks in Houston uh, were somewhat disappointed that they did not get a shuttle. So uh, some bittersweet moments for those in Houston, but an exciting moment for people here in New York. Carol. Somewhat disappointed. They were flat out angry. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more. Space Shuttle Endeavor, uh, Space Shuttle Enterprise, rather, uh, on top of a Boeing 747. It took off, oh, just about uh, 20 minutes ago from Dulles International Airport in Virginia. It's on its way to New York City. What a beautiful takeoff it was. It looks kind of lumbering from this shot, but we assure you it was going faster than it looks. I, it will make its way to JFK Airport, uh, we believe, in just about... It should land at 11 o'clock Eastern time, but you never know. Let's head out to Miami and John Zarella and... Uh, kind of bittersweet today watching this thing. 
Yeah, you know, it, it, it again, another mark that the end of uh, the end of the, the, the era is here. And uh, as Jason was mentioning, you're, you know, you're going to have Atlantis uh, retired to the Kennedy Space Center and you're going to have Endeavor out at the California Science Center. But you asked, and now I do have in front of me the names of the crew that's flying the shuttle. Again, I mentioned it's pretty much the same crew that brought Discovery up to Dulles. Uh, you have Bill Reich, who is commanding today. Jeff Moulty is the pilot today. Henry Taylor and Larry LaRose are the flight engineers, and Bob Zimmerman is the weather pilot. He's probably got a pretty big job today, and he's new on this flight, given the, uh, the conditions we're seeing up there, you know, in New York with the wind and everything uh, blowing there and the white caps on the Hudson River. So his job is probably a little bigger than it was for the, for the weather officer who flew Discovery up to Dulles when it was such a spectacular day up there. Carol? All right, John, I'm going to interrupt you because we have Lori Garby on the phone. She is the number two at NASA, and we want to get her... I'm sorry? Oh, she's live. We're glad we put you in front of a camera. That's a, that's a nice surprise for me, Lori. Thank you for being with us this morning. Good morning. It's great to be here. Um, so these flyovers of these shuttles over major cities, like the one over Washington, D.C., it, it was just spectacular. I'm sure the flyover of New York City will be spectacular as well. What do you want people to take away from those? Well, it is very exciting to share the excitement of the space program with the American people. We truly believe that uh, the 30-year shuttle history has helped develop a program that's going to take us farther into space. It built the International Space Station, and we want to share that excitement with the public. How much planning has gone into this? We're not ready to... Well, the, uh, NASA is all about planning, and the space shuttle program uh, has been planned to retire for over six years now, and we looked into how to best show the public that paid for these space shuttles uh, about the program, and we had bids for each of the cities. New York City uh, was able to get the Enterprise, and we've been planning for uh, half a year now about this flight and after she lands here at JFK today in two months she'll be barged up the river to the Intrepid Museum. Can you talk to us a little about the future of the space program in the United States and what NASA has planned? Of course all over the country today new space vehicles are being built with names like Orion and Dragon and Dream Chaser to carry us even farther into space. We have the space station with three astronauts living and working full time as I speak in space, studying how to make life better on Earth and also how we can explore further. We are partnering with our industry here in the United States to be able to lower the cost of space operations. The shuttle was a great program, but it costs three and a half billion dollars a year. She served her purpose well, and now we are going to be able to go to space with more people and do more things to benefit the future of humanity. Uh, you know, Lori, for, for old timers, seeing the space shuttles like retire to a museum is a sad thing, but, but it's progress too, isn't it? That's right. As we develop technology, we have to go further. The space shuttle was built with 1970s technology. It's a very interesting aspect of this today as Enterprise lands. I was just talking to Leonard Nimoy from Star Trek, and he hasn't seen the space shuttle since she rolled out in 1976. And you think about in that history what we have developed technically and if we're going to have that star trek future we need to use today's technology to go back into space at a cost that is less and to be able to take us farther it's actually a very exciting time wait a minute you talked to mr spock mr spock is here he's in new york and he's looking to see the enterprise again after more than 30 years. And there is a connection, right? Because the Enterprise, the Space Shuttle Enterprise, was named after the Star Trek's Enterprise. That's right. That's why he's here. When the Space Shuttle was developed and the very first Space Shuttle uh, was being named, there was a massive write-in campaign, and fans of Star Trek got her name the Enterprise. And so uh, he wants to be here as she comes to New York. Oh. Okay, I'm going to have Jason Carroll chase him down. <laughs> that would be cool. Not that we don't like talking to you, Lori. I didn't mean Absolutely. it that way. Absolutely. He'll be on the stage. No, no, of course. That's why I brought it up. He'll be on the stage with me later. But I know it was he is a surprise guest. 
Lori Garver, number two at NASA. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And we can't wait till we can see the space shell again. We don't have cameras quite at the place it's flying now, but we will soon. Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more after this.